thank you very much, Dave. And I, I, I don't doubt that people will take that opportunity to uh, to uh, put questions to you uh, uh, later on. Next, I'd like to uh, call to the microphone uh, another member of the uh, the inquiry. Uh, uh, Linda Volts, Linda's made it up here tonight all the way from Barbour Park near the airport in Sydney. So, thanks for coming. Very much. Thank you. Although sometimes I uh, quite often these days feel like I live in Newcastle, I'm up here so often. Um, I'm also the duty um, MLC representing the Labor Party for the seat of Lake Macquarie. So, uh, I am up here quite often, and before Jodie Harrison was elected, I was also the duty MLC for the seat of Charlestown. So I was in Newcastle three or four times a month and know the area well indeed. Uh, I have photos of myself as a child on Newcastle Oval, sitting on the front of my little dad's bonnet in the old days when we used to be able to drive the car up there and eat our meat pies. Um, I also uh, uh, had my uncle, um, uncle Doug, who was the shark man down here in. Uh, in, in the reviews for the sharks out of the net, and I have family members who lost their jobs when the steel works closed down here. I know Newcastle very well. Uh, I've spent a lot of time up here since I was a child. Um, and that's why I had a particular interest. And uh, the, the, the idea of the railway line isn't a new one to me. It's one that has been discussed uh, for the eight years that I've been in Parliament because I was representing Lake Macquarie and I had a particular interest representing Lake Macquarie. And the message I got from the people of Lake Macquarie uh, loud and clear was that they did not want their train line cut. And when Christina Kennelly asked myself and Frank Terrazini and, and Sonia Horry what we thought about uh, should happen to the train line, uh, she agreed with our message that we gave her pretty clearly that the train line should not be cut. Uh, and, 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 that, and that was the decision of the Labor Party. The Labor Party did not cut the train line and, and would not truncate the train line. Uh, now there's reasons uh, that, that, that we, um, we did that. For myself, uh, young kids in Morrisett who come down to the beach, uh, people who work in the city, uh, the thousand people who come down from Maitland every day for their jobs. That train line is not about Newcastle and the Newcastle Sea of BD. It is about the Hunter and the Hunter River. <laughs> So I just put my cards on the table uh, where I sit on that. That's not to say that I'm opposed to development in Newcastle. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm keen to see development in Newcastle, but it should be appropriate development in Newcastle. Um, as I was driving in today, it's the first time I've been back in Newcastle since my good friend Paul O'Grady died. And Paul O'Grady was the one message he always said to me about Newcastle was, it is so important to protect the heritage of the East End. The heritage of the East End has been fought for years by people like Paul O'Grady and by Bryce Gordry and all those kind of people to protect the heritage in the way that we fought to protect the rocks and Waterloo from being bulldozed because once they're gone, they're gone forever and they won't be coming back. And how would Sydney be now if we had allowed the rocks to be destroyed, if we allowed Waterloo to be destroyed? We give the poor of labour to be poor. In regards to the, 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 the committee report and our planning process, the other house is the house of review. We review the decisions of government. If the government could come to us with a case that said there, there is empirical evidence, there is data, there is all these reasons that we present to you for the reason that we need to truncate the rail line, um, uh, run it up Hunter Street, then I might say, okay, you have, a, you have a wealth of information, a wealth of information that says why this train line should be truncated. But go back to our December interim report. Every time I ask them the question of where was the evidence to have this train line truncated, they could not provide one document. The documents they did provide were two. One was the Hunter Research Survey. That was the Hunter Research Survey that we know was funded by GPT. The other, the other document the government provided was the From Death to Decay report. Again, do you want to know who funded that report? GPT. Now, for a government to walk into an upper house committee and provide only two documents, both of which were funded by a major property development, is not appropriate. That is not government's job. Government's job is to stand aside and make an independent decision about what is in the best interest for the people of that region. It's not about making a decision 
what is based on the evidence that some property developer has provided to you. And that's not good enough. Uh, the only other government um, response we had was from the Department of Planning. Now, the Department of Planning, uh, when we put it to them, said to us, well, that's in the, that's in the Department of Transport's purvey. It must be the Department of Transport that says we should do it this way. But we know that's not true. We know that's not true at all. In fact, the Department of Transport said you shouldn't truncate the line. In fact, you shouldn't truncate anything until you build the alternative route. And that is the big problem with this proposal that the government has put forward and what they are doing. If you're going to truncate the line at that point, what stops you from, from building the light rail straight away? Why couldn't they have built the light rail and then truncated the line? Because the light rail wasn't going down the rail corridor, according to them. The light rail was going up Hunter Street. There's absolutely no reason. And in fact, the Department of Transport has recommended that is what you should do. But here we have $120 million of proposed investment that is going to go into Newcastle, but it's off in the every somewhere. We don't know when it's going to come. Now, I want to see $120 million in Newcastle, but I want to see it spent appropriately, and I don't want to see it wasted, because quite frankly, Newcastle is going to be I hope you've all read the report. We won't have the government responses, obviously, until after the election and we all go back. We, we will be back um, in, in March and, and May. But um, quite frankly, based on the evidence that has been, pre been presented, uh, the government needs to go back and start again. The government needs to go back and actually do what we did in Blackwater and Roselle Bay, uh, unsuccessfully in the end, but we brought all the government agencies together. We protected the recreational zones, uh, we, 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 we put forward um, public access, we protected Working Harbour, we had a whole master plan for the whole process. Admittedly, they came along and ignored it. But at the end of the day, let's have at least a planning process that starts from the beginning, that starts bringing everyone together, that says, what do we actually need in Newcastle? Where is the need to truncate the line? If there's no need to truncate the line, where is that $120 million better spent? Where can we get the economic growth that both improves the unique lifestyle that is Newcastle and provides jobs for the future? And that's the important place the government should be starting. Thank you.